obviously, I, I mentioned my excitement to speak with you. Um, when it comes to the subject, I'm very enthusiastic. Uh, but my one question, um, I did a little research. Are you Catholic yourself? No, Jewish. Isn't it beautiful how this gentleman, this great man, has that bridge to connect, you know, all sorts of religions and people out there to be curious about him? You know what? I think what attracts to him, his humanity, mm -hmm. his ability to be this kind of a role model that you want to replicate in your actions, to learn from him. Because his humanity, his ability to uh, spread the coexistence between different religions. Listen, this last trip to Iraq was a great example to that. So I think this ability to be for every human being, no matter of his race, uh, color of the skin, religious beliefs, sexual orientation, I think that's what attracts you to this human being. And that's why you're not looking to, at him as the head of Catholic Church, you're looking at him as the human being who trying to be a leader and then your friend and the humble brother and the father. And that's what attracts you. And that's why a Jewish boy can literally go and take all his messages, compile them in one comprehensive story in a movie and bring it to the world. Indeed. And right now that you mentioned bringing the story, I understand that there was a, a possibility or idea or pitch of making maybe like a couple of episodes, like a series versus to an uh, actual film. Some friends of mine were trying to convince me to do a TV series. And I said, no, because I believe in what I'm doing. And I believe in a documentary storytelling, not just in a series, not that I'm against series, but when you, from the beginning, trying to create call for action, I think AAA, advocacy, activism, action, works only in a kind of format of a documentary that you can create this massive call for action, change hearts and minds. Yes, docu-series can do the same thing, but not exactly like a documentary. Because I saw, I saw how my previous movies been able to bring voices of innocent people from all over the world and change hearts and minds, open hearts towards refugees, explain the, educate and explain story of Syria, complicated story, or inspire people to stand against oppression in, in dictatorships in different countries through Winter on Fire, movie about Ukrainian revolution. So I think that's the beauty of the documentary storytelling where you can create a call for action. So I wanted to do a call for action. I wanted to do a documentary. Well, in the media, in this case, you're covering so many topics. I mean, you covered, you had a chance to cover the pandemic. Um, you, you know, law enforcement issues, racism, borders, immigration, uh, wind and moon empowerment, not the very, you know, positive side uh, news that has, you know, taken place when it came, it's been come to the, to, uh, when, the, when it comes to the Pope with, you know, sexual abuse, um, headlines and um, LGBT also was covered. Genius that, that was a lot. Of to Holocaust, uh, yes. you know, climate change, uh, Syria. You have a lot, yes. Yes, and one of the ones that I didn't know about was about the, the Armenian genocide. That was impressive. Like, how come that hasn't been covered much over here? So you see, for the first time, you do see something very important covered in a movie about pop, which not related. Again, it's a first Christian nation, but it's not been covered much. So I try to bring the stories that is uh, not only relevant to today's world, but relevant to take as the learning lessons in order to prevent situations in today's world, like Rohingya refugees. It's uh, the situation Myanmar that ongoing right now, and it's critical. So I guess in order to stop the mistakes, prevent us from making the mistakes from the past, you need to bring these stories like from Armenian nation, from Armenian uh, history, to Holocaust, to the, all what's happened to us, to Jewish nation. So I think it's, it was really important for me to go and dive into the history in order to bring the relevance of learning lessons from the past 
and show it how really important this to today's world. Right. Um, so also just to be clear, obviously, as we've been talking about some other things, this film is not uh, like a biography about Pope Francis, but no. about how he is putting in his side and input to help the situation. You know what, I think for me, I look at this differently. I look at this movie as a love letter to humanity from him, as a love letter to us human beings who created all these disasters. And I think it's more to remind us what will happen if we'll forget how to love each other, how to spread love, be united. Because it's all disasters that we created and he's humbly trying to navigate us, hey, it's, it's okay, but it, you did it. But let's together, united, try to change something, to prevent, to distract the nature more, destroy the nature more, to prevent the more war conflicts and spread peace. I think he's trying to navigate us into the safe path into the future, even out of this pandemic. And I think that's how I look at this movie, not just another movie about Pope Francis, like some people seeing this, for me, it's us. It's a humanity as the key character, and he is the somebody who trying to help us to find the way out of this darkness of today's world. That's why the movie starts with this scene, this scene of Pope walking alone through the St. Peter's Square. St. Peter's Square, they're always full of people. I've been so many times in Rome, I'm sure you've been, and many people who are watching this, they know that St. Peter will never be uh, empty, and here, we are dead, dark skies like a doomsday rain, and Pope alone in his white dress, walking St. Peter's Square like an angel of light, trying to spread this light through all these dark clouds. It's, it's like a doomsday, it's resemblance of doomsday. So it makes us to understand, hey, we do need to stop everything what we're doing, reevaluate what we did already, and with completely different actions different mood, different viewership, different view of the situation, go into the future and be a heroes of the future, but do it in different way, not with the same actions that we did before. See, for me, maybe I see it in that aspect about how he's putting his input into a lot of things because I myself am a Catholic. Um, you know, it's not everyone gets to say they lived a lifetime and saw three different popes in this case. Um, but when it came to Benedict, I feel like a lot of Catholics were kind of like lost in disappointment how there was not much input. So when, when Pope Francis came in and he started doing movements and actually uh, kind of like had everyone kind of like open our eyes and be like, hey, you got to adapt that things have changed. And, you know, we can actually make a difference. For me, that's, that's been like a phenomenal thing. And unfortunately, it seems like at all, a lot of the older generation, Catholic generations are not very keen about some of these changes. But us, the younger ones, um, we're just like pretty enthusiastic about him. I think he's trying to take the church in 21st century. First of all, he's the human being who willing to learn, even at his age, 84, he is still willing to learn, and that's the beauty of this human being. And he is pretty humble. When you are with him, you're not feeling superiority of leader or somebody. You're feeling like your brother, your friend, mm -hmm. your relative. And uh, that's the beauty of him. And I think he's trying to take church into the 21st century. The difference is that it is an institution of over 2,000 years, and you know it even I know. And I think it takes time, it takes time to bring these changes because I see how he's trying to bring transparency. He's trying to endorse women into higher positions of the church. He's trying to bring more equality, more lay people because he believes that by bringing more lay people, he can adjust this situation where priests covering the crimes of others and it helps him to fight the corruption in the church. He is fighting, fiercely fighting, really fighting in a real way, not just in the words, but in actions, the child abuse in the church, 
which not been done so transparently before, and we seeing what he's doing. That's the beauty of this situation. So again, he's doing step by step. He's trying to welcome everybody into the church, make church again for every human being. And I think that's the beauty of this person. He moved into 21st century. Now, how fast? I guess the time will show us, but he's doing this, not just talking, doing. And I guess that's what we can remind to the Catholic people that he is trying to bring the true belief in the church back to many faithful Catholics. And that I am super thankful. And like I said, super excited about. Um, so was it you the one interviewing um, Pope Francis for the clips where he's speaking? Listen, I met with him many times and uh, these uh, situations, these interviews that I conducted with him allowed me to capture his image, to capture his essence. So he is amazing on camera and off camera. But I guess I cherish more our meetings off camera where you can spend much more time with him uh, without less people, without huge amounts of the crew around you. And that allows you to really, really understand his mind. Because for me, it's not was a movie to have him all the time on the camera. For me, it was more to bring certain messages from him, but in the same time, allow him to elaborate on them. And I also learned that for the audience, it's much better to see him in action than just to have him sitting in front of the camera and talking. Because he said from the beginning to me, he said, Evgeny, I'd rather go to the end of the world, to the corners, to help people, than to be in front of the camera, to be an actor in a movie. And it's him. It's the <laughs> essence of Pope Francis. It's his heart and soul of Jesuit. And for this, I guess, we're all admiring him. For him, not just talking, but making things, acting. And sometimes we even don't know what he's doing because he's doing a lot of things behind the scenes to help people. And that's the beauty of the human being called Jorge Maria Bergoglio, or Father George, or Pope Francis. Right. At any time during the, during, you know, while you spoke to him, um, I mean, I, I got it, even just watching the document, I did tear up a few times, just the way he spoke, the way he delivers messages. Was there any time that you, did that moment ever come to you? I, when I'm watching my movies and specifically this one, I have a lot of tears because I'm very emotionally attached to the whole sexual abuse segment. I'm attached to Juan Carlos Cruz. I'm attached to the Syrian refugees because listen, I'm also immigrated from different country and I've been in Syria, I witnessed, I told their story. So for me, there is so many moments in this movie that I am literally crying. And the, when I was making the movie, I had emotional moments with him. I had emotional moments while I was making the movie. And I have a lot of emotional moments when I'm still watching it every time because so many, elements in this movie are close to my heart. They are really important to me personally. Uh, I'm just listening to him as you're getting watery. Oh my gosh. Um, one of the, the phrases that he mentioned that was pretty touching is that there's no saint without a past, nor a sinner without a future. Oscar Wilde. There's a, there's a saying there. And that, when he's talking about that and in reference to, you know, from his history, from where he was Argentina to, to today, I mean, and then him say, you know, him referencing, it's just, it's, it's, it was beautiful. That's one of the lines that actually made me cry. And it was just, you know, a line, go figure. But it's also a truth towards us. It's reminding us that, hey, yes, we created disasters, but we still can have a future and save future if we will condemn our mistakes, if you will recognize our mistakes, if you mm will -hmm. redemption, and if you will reevaluate what needs to be left in the past, mm -hmm. then we can find the way how we can go to the safe future. So absolutely, this say working perfectly for us, for humanity, who created all these disasters, who sinned, sinned against nature, sinned against our neighbors, sinned against each other, and that's what he's pointing us. We all can be sinners, but the most important, 
to recognize the mistake. Nobody is angel. Nobody is perfect in this world. And that's the message. And I think that's the message perfectly apl applicable to any person in this world. The most important to recognize the mistakes and learn from these mistakes and not to be stubborn, not to recognize mistakes and continue doing this. That's the horrible crime. And I think that's the beauty of this say. Uh, and to talk, you more, to talk more about him and being part of this documentary, was it hard to get him to participate? Uh, when I came to Vatican, I not was promised the interview with him, actually. I, ne I never been promised uh, any interviews with him. And that was the challenge. I was building my relationship and my way to him step by step. And uh, it took time. It took time to get to the meet, to the meetings, to get some time for the first time to sit with him. So it took some time. But you know what? As every journalist, filmmaker, I love challenges. But the most important was to build through these challenges my relationship, my true relationship with this person. And I did it. I did it in all my movies. It's always you as the filmmaker finding the way to build your relationship with your character. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it takes time. With him, it took a lot of time. Can you tell me anything that surprised you about him that you did not expect from spending all this time with him and, and your talks? I think the ability to feel comfortable next to him. I never felt any difference between two of us. We both were human beings in all our conversations about so many important subjects. You don't feel superiority when you are with him. And I guess that was a fascinating thing to see, uh, to feel comfortable next to him because he makes you to feel this level of comfort. I think that's real surprises because you expect him, Paul, you're seeing him on a big screen, he's traveling, all world is following him. But you know what, when you are with him, like I said, you're feeling the relative, you're feeling friend, and he is dear friend. He is a dear brother. He is a father. He is somebody who will give you a hand in any moment during day or night. And that's why I said it was a surprise when I met him for the first time and when I opened him heart and when uh, he opened to me ability to tell all these stories and allowed me to be a free artist had my freedom of artists to tackle anything. That was the biggest surprise, I guess, for me. The freedom that did, he gave. Did he set any restrictions when it came to the documentary? No, no. I had a freedom to tackle anything. And did he already watch the documentary? He watched some parts of the documentary. Did he say anything, any feedback from him? Uh, listen, he enjoyed it because he saw his friends, he saw his family, he saw picture of his mom, grandmother. Mm -hmm. He saw uh, his dear friends from Argentina. He kind of, again, saw some of his trips and the actions that he did for these people, the things that happened to improve their lives. For him, I guess it was amazing, amazing, amazing experience to rewatch these moments and see what good he did for them. I think that was the beauty. And you can see it by his eyes, his excitement when he was watching it. What would you, would, would you, while you were talking to him, was there a subject that he was kind of, that he like, maybe not his attend, but struggled to speak about? Or was he always just at ease and comfortable about speaking about anything? No, I don't remember. You know, he is always comfortable to talk about anything. Even the harsh situation that right now is the gay subject. Listen, I opened him my heart that I'm gay and uh, you can see we still have a relationship and he accepted me for who I am and he said Evgeny judge not that's what Jesus said and that's what is in the matter and I think that's uh, his expression who am I to judge and uh, he is accepting every human being as he is and I think that's the important thing for him as the priest it's important to protect any human being life. Mm -hmm. No matter, like I said already, color of skin, religious beliefs, or sexual orientation. For him, 
every human me being is the child of God. And that's what is his desire to do, to protect every human life. Because he's a priest. He's the father. Uh, for the, the for all the parts that were in the documentary, which which ones were you were you present for any of the the current events, or was it all just captured from past footage? No, a lot of things happened in front of me. I wasn't present because for me, some things were captured before, but I was just going traveling the world and doing all the interviews because all interviews done by me. So some of them I was traveling after him after his visits, and some of them I was uh, witnessing and they were developed in, uh, literally in front of me. But through the last three years, I traveled the world. I was uh, traveling to all the places and it was important for me to feel it, to touch the same subjects with the same people and see the differences, improvements. It's, uh, it was important to have idea what happened after him bringing spotlight to this issue, to that issue. And we can hear this specifically from Juan Carlos Cruz or from the Rakhine refugees, how it's really improved their lives. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. My time is up. I would love to continue talking about this. Um, I still would have so many questions that I would love to hear about. But thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'm so glad you brought this documentary and uh, opening our eyes to so many subjects, like I said, that I was not aware of. And that should be brought up to our, to our attention. Thank you, and thank you for helping us to spread his message. Thank you.